So fasting for me has always been something that God has brought up in my heart um, through a variety of, of, of different issues that have just kind of gone through my life. Sometimes fasting is connected to repentance for me, um, and other times uh, fasting is connected to seeking God's will and trying to determine something that I'm praying about. I should say that fasting every time for me is always connected to prayer, um, regardless of whether I'm fasting from food or whether I'm fasting from media or fasting from certain things. And ultimately at the heart of fasting for me personally is a deep desire to connect deeper with God. It's an incredibly powerful discipline. Um, the apostles themselves did it. Jesus himself did it. The psalmist did it. Um, it's all over scripture where you'll find examples of it. And I think as a Christian, if you haven't done it, I would just, I would just encourage you to, to, to read the word and to pray and to start with really small steps on what that could look like for your life. I think the most important thing about fasting is connecting to the heart of God. And, and what I mean by that is that as, as Christians, and this is not meant to sound condemning in any way, shape or form, we live in a country where there's just a lot of good things in our lives, right? Uh, most of us have really full refrigerators. Um, you know, most of us are not being chased out of our homes. Most of us have healthcare benefits. Most of us um, have things in our lives that bring us comfort. And personally for me, what I find is that those very things can deaden my desire to God and seeking God on a deeper level. And, and hear me out when I say this, all of those things that I mentioned are not bad things in themselves. They're really good things, right? I'm thankful that I have a house, that I have food on my table, but I, at times in my own heart, I, I can depend on those good gifts and not seek God as deeply as, as, as I need to for a variety of things, right? So at the heart of fasting is, 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 is me saying, Lord, you know, I know I have all these good things. I want you more than I want these good things. It's incredibly humbling um, to put yourself in that position because what you're saying to God is like, hey, I, I don't have it together. You know, I know what people see on the outside, but like, I'm incredibly broken and frail. You, you know, I, I use this analogy all the time with people. I'm just like hooking on to like God's rope, metaphorical rope, and just saying, you know what, God, in fasting, I'm just gonna hold on to you. And I, I just wanna see more of you. I wanna see you speak into my life and I want you to help me figure this out because I can't do it. Um, and that's, um, it's, it's a humbling experience. Here is the biggest thing that I've learned about fasting my utter need and dependence on God. And you know, I, and I think in Christian circles, we, we sing that and we say that and we're in Bible studies, but you know what the truth is? That I can live my life and really just kind of pay lip service to that. And in fasting, I really realize like how utterly dependent I am on God just to make it to the next day. I mean, here's a great example, right? 2020 has been a year where we have, it seems like we've lost control of just about everything, <laughs> you know, between pandemics and social and racial unrest and environmental issues and unemployment and financial crises. It's like, there's something new in the news every day that reminds me, Ted, you are not in control of anything. Gosh, that, that inside of me just creates a heart to say, oh man, I, God, this, year feels really, really bad, but I know you're still sovereign. Help me understand what's happening and help me know what I need to do in the midst of all of this. Read what the Bible has to say about fasting, first and foremost, right? Because I don't want you to listen to my opinion. I want you to search the scriptures and see what the word of God says about fasting, right? And then second, after you read that, you know, open your heart and say, you know, Lord, I've never done fasting. But yet I see fasting connected to repentance. I see fasting connected to prayer. I see fasting connected to decision-making. Here's a real simple question. I'm not an elder and I'm not a psalmist and I'm not any of these things. I'm just an ordinary person. 
who's following you, show me what steps I need to take in fasting, right? Because I've been feeling this desire. And maybe God will say to you, hey, why don't you fast lunch today and spend that hour praying to me about the issues in your heart? It could literally be that simple. And that could be a start in itself. You know, I see it in the Old Testament, I see it in the New Testament. So what does that mean for me as a Christian today living in Gurney? I can, I can use this principle in my life to develop a deeper relationship with God and to pray through some things that I'm praying through or to seek his help. I, I'll be honest with you, more than 50% of my fasting has always been with like, here's the prayer, God help me. Lord, help me. Like, I, I don't know what to do here. I have no idea how to fix this. You know, whatever, you fill in the blank, right? Um, and, and because I know no one else can help me. God is the only one that can help me, right? Even if he doesn't answer what you're praying about, I guarantee you he will change your heart to be able to handle the circumstances that you're dealing with. Especially when you say, you know, God, I, I don't want these things around me, food, pleasure, media, leisure, whatever it is. I want, I want you, Lord. God honors those prayers. That's right in line with scripture, you know, because you're seeking God first above all these other gifts, all these are the good things that God's given you. So it's a good thing to ground yourself in that.